Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, we're going to look at how to find and simplify the expressions for f prime and f double prime, particularly using the quotient rule and things like that, which is tricky for a lot of calculus students. So I've got three spicy little examples for you guys. Let's just jump right into it. First example, we're going to let f of x equal x over x squared minus 4. This example comes um, later in assignments where you need to graph a function. And in order to do that, you need to find the first and second derivatives and test their signs. A lot of times students struggle just cleaning up the derivative enough to test the signs. So I'm here to help you out with that. Let's go ahead, apply the quotient rule to find the derivative. Um, I like to sing a little song. So this is high over low. We've got low d high, so low, the denominator, d high means derivative of the numerator, so that would be 1. Low d high minus high d low is 2x over low low. I've also heard the remix, square the bottom away you go, so you know, whatever you're feeling. So that would be x squared minus 4 squared. Nice. Now this one's not going to be too bad to clean up. So we've got x squared minus 4. This is minus 2x squared over x squared minus 4 squared. Okay, and then I can combine like terms in the numerator there. So we've got negative x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 4 squared. That's f prime of x. That's not bad. Most students can do that just fine. If you're in the mood, I, I usually do factor out that negative in the numerator, um, just because you're going to be testing the sign of the derivative in application. So it's nice to see that, hey, x squared plus 4, we can tell by looking at that. It's not going to have any zeros. This is always positive. So that's always negative. You'll see when that comes into play. OK, that's fine. Things obviously get a little more involved when we get into the second derivative, so follow me over here. So let's go ahead, differentiate f prime of x again. So now we need f double prime of x. I'm going to use this version here. I don't want to have to contend with the minus sign and distributing it, okay, while well, I'm trying to take the derivative. So here we go, low d high, so low, x squared minus 4 squared d high, derivative of the numerator. Derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. Derivative of negative 4 is 0. Okay, low d high. Minus high, negative x squared minus 4. d low, I need to use the chain rule to differentiate the denominator. So take the 2, bring it in front. So we'll have 2. New exponent is 1. Don't touch what's inside. And then times by the chain rule, derivative of the quantity inside, so that would be 2x. So double check. High d low. Love it. Over low low. So this time I'm going to have x squared minus 4 to the fourth. Okay? Now, do not try to just multiply this all out. You're going to drive yourself crazy. It's going to be a nightmare. Usually you're going to be able to factor and cancel in a very slick way. So look at the numerator. What can you factor out from, think of it, there's two terms going on here in the numerator. I see x squared minus 4. This is not x squared minus 4, so I can't take that out. I can take out 1x squared minus 4, and I can also take out a 2x. Yes, do you see it? Okay, good. So take that out. x squared minus 4. 2x. Now what's left over? I took out one of these x squared minus 4. So here's the first term. There's the first one, and then here's the second one. So from the first term, I took out one of these, so I got one left. Oh, okay. We thought about it. I took out the 2x, so I have a negative. Good. Minus. I didn't take this out. I'm just going to leave it like this. Let's not do too much at once and overwhelm ourselves. Okay. And then this 2, he's hanging out. x squared minus 4, I took it out. 2x, I took it out. So all I have left is a 2. Let's stick with the blue. Okay? How do you feel? 
The worst is over, I promise, I promise. Okay, and then we've got x squared minus four to the fourth. Okay, the whole point of this is notice I've got four factors of x squared minus four. I've got one sitting out here. Cancel one of them. And then now, yeah, we're going to multiply and distribute this all out, but it's much less of a nightmare, you know? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we've got 2x times, I'll change back to parentheses. This is going to be negative x squared plus 4. Yes. This is going to be plus x squared plus 4. over x squared minus four cubed. Okay, just so I don't rewrite the whole thing out. This is two x squared plus eight. Okay, so then now we've got two x, two x squared minus x squared, that's one x squared. And then we have eight plus four, that's 12 over x squared minus four cubed. Box it, love it. Good? Okay. Let's continue with another example. Okay, so next example, again, we're just gonna find f prime, f double prime, clean them up. f of x equals x minus three times the square root of x. Right off the bat, I'm looking at it, I'm not gonna use the product rule, because I can rewrite square root of x as x to the one half, and then distribute it through. Save product rule like when it's absolutely necessary, you know? So this is equal to x minus three times x to the one half. I'm not taking any derivatives yet. And then when I distribute through, this is gonna be x to the three halves minus three x to the one half. Okay, now to find f prime of x, it's gonna be no big deal because I can just differentiate term by term. So f prime of x, Derivative of x to the 3 halves, remember you bring the exponent down in the front, multiply by it, and then subtract 1, that's the new exponent. So we'll have 3 halves x to the 1 half minus 3 times 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. Right? If you need to review your differentiation rules, you just do it. Don't be embarrassed. All right. As I mentioned earlier, when you find these derivatives, you want to simplify them enough because you're going to test where they're equal to zero, where they're positive, where they're negative. So the way it is right here, it's a hot mess, you can't do it. You want it as one term, okay? So let's clean things up a bit. This is three x to the one half over two mm -hmm. minus three over two x to the one half, okay? So I'm getting ready to get a common denominator what is that common denominator? It's 2x to the 1 half power. So this guy needs an x to the 1 half, x to the 1 half, and then we're in business. So this is gonna be x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. What do we do with the exponents? Add them together, right? So this is gonna be 3x to the first minus three, all happy together in the numerator, over 2x to the one half. Okay, so nice. Didn't it clean up nicely? I mean, man, what a transformation. I would factor the three out of the numerator. Yes, I would. Just to state my final answer. If you want to put this as a rad x, it's really up to you or check with your instructor. I like it like this. Okay, and then now I can easily tell, okay, the derivative is zero when x is equal to one, and we can test the signs and all of that more easily. Okay, so that's f prime. We made it all right so far? We need to do f double prime. So for f double prime, we do have to use the quotient rule. I would. I mean, I guess you could differentiate this again, but it's gonna make a little bit more of a mess. So let's use this version here, okay? So before I factored out the three. We'll use this version here to find f double prime. So f double prime of x, here we go. We've got low d high. So derivative of the numerator, derivative of three x is just three, derivative of negative three is zero. So three minus high d 
d low. So derivative of 2x to the 1 half, I'm going to bring the 1 half down in the front. So 2 times a half, that's just 1. And then subtract 1 from the exponent. Now I have x to the negative 1 half over low low. So if I square 2x to the 1 half, square the 2, square the x to the 1 half, it's just 4x. Okay. Good, good, good. A um, couple ways you can think about this. You can factor out again the way I showed you earlier. Another thing I want you to realize is this x to the negative 1 half, that's a 1 over radical x, right? So technically we have a complex fraction at this point because we have a fraction within a fraction. So usually students like thinking of it that way better. So let me help you clean it up that way. So we've got this is 6x to the 1 half minus 3x minus 3, and I'm going to write 1 over x to the 1 half, all over 4x. Okay, this ugly little x, let's fix him. Um, so, to simplify the complex fraction, I'm going to multiply through by x to the 1 half, right, because you don't want that extra denominator in there. So everybody, everybody, everybody gets multiplied by x to the 1 half. Okay, this will distribute here, here, and then it's already down there. So let's see, we've got 6x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. We add these exponents, so that's going to be 6x to the first minus, and then the whole point of doing this was so these guys would cancel, bam, bam. So we've got minus 3x minus 3 over, add these exponents, there's a 1 here, so this is 4x to the 3 halves. Okay? And then now we can just combine like terms. So this is going to be positive 3x plus 3, wow, how cute, <laughs> over 4x to the 3 halves. You could stop there, or if you want to wow everyone, you know, factor out the 3. Another way you could have simplified, if you take out the greatest common factor, um, like I did in the previous problem, it's just a little bit harder with negative exponents. It's very doable, but most students like it when I write the negative exponent in the denominator and clear it that way. Up to you. Okay? One more example. All right, last example, f of x equals x squared over x squared plus 3. I really think you guys can do this one on your own, so why don't you pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so here we go. Let's check f prime of x. f prime of x is going to be low d high, derivative of the numerator, derivative of x squared is 2x, minus high d low is also 2x because derivative of 3 is 0 over low low x squared plus 3 squared. Distribute, let's clean up. So this is going to be 2x cubed. Ooh, where'd that 4 come from? My hand had a mind of its own. You could factor out the 2x, but this one's not so obscene that I would do it. Whatever. Um, so 2x cubed plus 6x minus 2x cubed, like that was painless, so you know, um, over x squared plus 3 squared. And then, yes, 2x cubed cancels out, and we're just left with 6x over x squared plus 3 quantity squared. Okay? Good at double prime time. So here we go. Low d high. So low, leave the denominator alone. d high, derivative of the numerator is 6. Derivative of 6x is 6. Minus high d low. So we need to use the chain rule. Bring the 2 in the front. Don't touch what's inside just yet. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Now, rewrite what's inside and then multiply by its derivative, okay? If you need a chain rule review, I'll link it right here. Over 
no, no. So that would be x squared plus 3 squared squared to the fourth. This I would not multiply it all out. That would be nightmarish, yes. So let's factor out the GCF. I can take out an x squared plus 3. Can I take out two of them? No, because it's the greatest common factor. You can't take out more than what one of the terms has. Again, we've got two terms here. Yeah? So I can take out an x squared plus 3. Anything else? A 6, right? Okay, so 6 and x squared plus 3, they're coming out. What is left? I still have an x squared plus 3 to the first. That 6 is gone, minus that 6 is gone. I've got an x and a 2 and a 2x left. Where's everybody else? Outside. x squared plus 3 and 6 got exiled. Okay, so then we've got 2x times 2x. That's 4x squared. Love it. Over x squared plus 3 to the 4th. Okay. See something nice? You can cancel out an x squared plus 3. And then just clean up in here. So we've got 6 times x squared minus 4x squared. That's going to be negative 3x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3 cubed, what do you want to do? Not only take out a 3, the snazzy math student would take out a negative 3. When the leading term is negative, take it out, okay? So if I take out a negative 3, there's already a 6, that's going to be negative 18, and then you'll have x squared minus 1. What a thing of beauty. You know why this is so beautiful? Because when you go to find the zeros of f double prime, you're already ready. You're ready to roll. Okay. Over, I get too excited, x squared plus 3 cubed. And then we're going to box it, but that 3 is deformed, so let's fix it really quickly. Cubed. Okay. Good. Do you feel better? You just got to practice doing these perfectly again and again. So that concludes the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, please. It really helps support my channel so I can continue to make videos. Give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned. I got lots more videos coming your way.